Recently, myself and a lot of other people have completed Final Fantasy VII Remake, and there have been a lot of deferring opinions on whether the ending was good or not. I had a great time with the game, and I just kind of want to offer some points as to why I think the ending was really exciting, and why I think a lot of the negativity is really unfounded. So, the first point I want to go over is that the events that occurred in the game were more or less the same as the original. What were the main differences? Zack was the very first thing that comes to mind. So, is he really alive, or what's going on there? My immediate thought when playing through the game was not that he's alive, although it's possible. When I saw the cutscene where the heroes are walking in the rain and Zack and Cloud walk past them, my immediate thought was, oh, this is a flashback. Zack really is dead. We just don't see the part where he dies. And that's obviously going to immediately happen after they walk up to a certain point. They get ambushed. Zack gets killed. Whereas the scene where Zack is fighting all the uh, the Shinra troops and he survives, uh, well, obviously that didn't happen in the current timeline because, you know, they make a very clear point to show the, uh, the bag of chips with Stamp on it that has a completely different dog breed on it than Stamp in the quote-unquote real world. So obviously we know that was just... Watchmen of fuckery, whatever. So my thought was that Zack isn't alive in the current timeline, but a lot of people seem to think differently because they didn't show him dying. So obviously that's something that's going to need to be answered in future parts, but you got to wonder how is Cloud really Cloud if Zack doesn't die or we don't at least get the illusion that he died. Because spoilers for the original game, the reason Cloud is the way he is is because he has a weird personality disorder thing where he believes that he did the things that Zack actually did just because he was, you know, so messed up from getting experimented on by Hojo after killing Sephiroth and, you know, there's that whole plot point. Obviously, if you played the original game, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's really bizarre. We don't know if he's really alive. We don't know if this was just a nod saying, hey, Crisis Core was cool. <laughs> that's kind of what my thought was. And so I don't want to jump to conclusions as to whether or not Zack is alive yet, because we just don't know. So then, obviously, the other big thing was there was a fight with Sephiroth at the end of the game. And I knew a lot of people were going to roll their eyes at this because it's like, why are we fighting Sephiroth already at Midgar? Nobody should know who Sephiroth is at this point except for Tifa and Cloud. And I guess technically Aerith might. I mean, people have heard of him, but they've never seen him in person. So that was obviously different. I knew the moment that they were going to remake this game that the final boss was going to be Sephiroth because why would you end it on a highway against a, a big robot? I just feel like that doesn't, that's not really a satisfying ending for a big blockbuster like AAA game like this. And then the other thing that a lot of people were complaining about was the fact that Biggs and Wedge are still alive and there may be hints that Jesse is still alive. And my thought with that was, I remember seeing Biggs waking up in the bed at the Leaf House at the end of the game and thinking, you know what, I'm okay with that. And the reason is, is because they took all this time to build up these really interesting, vibrant characters in Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse and if they were just to throw them out when it doesn't really hinge on the plot for them to be dead in the original. A lot of people are saying it raises the stakes. I don't really think it does. I think it was just there to be a sad moment. And we don't really know if Jesse is still alive. It, there still could be some sacrifice there. We never saw Jesse alive, so you don't know. But I feel like it would be a waste at this point when they could bring these characters back and have them do interesting and cool things in the sequels that they didn't do in the original and I think that's spectacular personally. 
those were the main differences that I can think of. But then another point I want to touch on is how much of the original story do the main characters know at this point? Obviously, with the Watchmen of Fate, all the characters in the fight at the end get all these premonitions of things that happened in the original game. They have the part where you show Red 13 saying, this is what would happen if we fail here today, which is a bizarre line in itself because technically that was the good ending other than Aerith dying so <laughs> I don't know why that's failure because that's technically a good thing but also we don't know how much they know because the only premonitions we see that they have are first of all Meteor and second of all the scene where it shows Red 13 running but we don't know how much they see beyond that I'm assuming they see the whole ending scene of the original game where Midgar is totally ruined hundreds of years in the future and life kind of just goes on. If they were to have seen other things such as Aerith's death, why did Aerith not react to her own death? You gotta wonder, how much do they really know? We just don't know, because it wasn't shown to us. It was just a couple of small little blips, and the characters said, okay, we gotta change the future. But what what do they? What are they changing? Are they just changing Sephiroth summoning Meteor? Are they, are they just trying to stop that? I mean, that's what happened in the original game. But I don't know. It's just, it's bizarre are and you, we just don't know yet. There's so many questions there and I feel like it's a waste to freak out about it right now before we know for sure. Then there's the other side of the coin is how much does Sephiroth really know? You can see throughout the story that the Watchmen of Fate are showing up at integral points and it almost seems like they're trying to stop certain things from happening. Like in the church where Cloud and Reno are fighting obviously that fight didn't happen in the original game so was this to stop one of them from killing the other we don't know for sure it almost it seems that way but that might not necessarily be true my thought was that the reason the watchmen of fate are intervening is just so that reunion can happen no matter what and you could argue against that theory because there is a point where Barrett's life is saved. And what does Barrett have to do with Reunion? And my thought was, in the original game, after you get the Black Materia that's needed to summon Meteor, Cloud gives the Black Materia to another character so that he isn't tempted by Sephiroth to give it over to Sephiroth. And my thought, if what if in this incarnation of the story, no matter what, Cloud gives that Black Materia to Barrett. And so if Barrett dies, then that can't play out that way and maybe there's a reason it needs to play out that way and we just don't know it yet so that could be a really interesting plot point you know we gotta obviously assume that the watchmen of fate know everything that's going to happen because they're the watchmen of fate but does that necessarily mean that sephiroth knows everything does that mean necessarily now that everybody currently knows everything we just don't know it's kind of interesting to have characters know more because what if this puts us in a scenario, you know, like a Marvel Endgame scenario where no matter what, there is one outcome that will save the planet and it always results in Aerith dying. Now that's not my original idea. I can't take credit for that. I've heard that in several other places but I think that is such a good idea because how do you expand upon a moment in video games that is just so iconic as Aerith's death except to make it so no matter what it has to happen and you know there's already kind of that's almost kind of like an in joke right now is like whenever people go back to play the original game they're just like oh man I wish I wish I could save Aerith there have actually been mods in which you can bring her back which is interesting but what if this is the developers way of saying no, she has to die in order for the story to play out. And that's just the big crux of everything that's going on with this remake. That would be so cool. Tragic, but really cool. <laughs> I guess there are some issues I do want to bring up about this ending, but I think they're kind of minor. And the first of those things would be power scaling. Now the series is going to kind of run into a weird like Dragon Ball Super kind of thing where it's like, what the hell? These characters are should be so strong right now that these basic enemies should be giving them no trouble at all. Cloud is essentially Advent Children levels of strong at the end of Midgar in this remake. 
How can anything that's coming up even touch him? He should be able to just pull through everything. So you got to wonder if we're just going to need to suspend our disbelief with that one. I do think that could be a little bit bizarre, but I don't think that that for me personally would take away from my experience in the next game because it's not like other games in the series haven't done that any game with sequels you would know that take a look at the witcher is there a reason why Geralt is all of a sudden back to square one in game three even though he had two other games of experience behind him i you know it doesn't really make sense so that's just kind of video games being video games i don't know <laughs> so my other issue is what even is a remake anymore people keep calling this uh final fantasy 7 remake part one leading into like a sequel of the original game which is both cool in a way because it's like how often do you get sequel to a game that came out in 1997 but at the same time what does that mean for other remakes what 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 can we expect from resident evil 4 remake is that gonna all of a sudden have to completely change everything to be relevant at this point. That's potentially weird, but I, I don't know. I'm I'm optimistic about the whole thing. I think that this is leading to really interesting and cool places, and everybody's theory crafting right now, which I think is awesome, because if this game had just played out exactly the same as the original, we wouldn't be doing this right now, because we'd be saying, okay, well, we know what's going to happen in the next game. We're going to go to Calm. We're going to do all these other things that we've done before. And there's no surprises. But now we have things to talk about. And I know that a lot of people are upset because, you know, I paid $60 to play the game I loved, not this this other thing. And I, I understand that sentiment to an extent, but also if you really wanted the original game, just go play the original game. There are so many mods out there for it. We're going back to how upset people were when they found out that it wasn't turn-based anymore. Everybody was like, well, I wanted it to be turn-based. And then people kind of settled and said, well, you know, I guess if I want a turn-based Final Fantasy VII, I can go play the original. And now we're at a point where it's like, well, I just want the original story. It's like, okay, well, that game exists. Just go back and play it. And you can mod it. You can do some really cool things with the mods that are out for it right now. And it's basically almost like a remake in its own. So I don't know. I think that people need to, first of all, calm down it's not the end of the world and second of all i think that there are a lot of things to be excited for and i think if you are genuinely so concerned about it that you can't enjoy yourself then i guess it's just not a game for you so i personally am really excited and i hope that other people are too and maybe if you watch this video and you thought about some of these things that i said and it got you excited instead when you were not excited before then i'm really happy because that's really what I wanted this video to do, was to get people more excited, as excited as I am. So, thanks.